All right, the purpose of this video today is how to do the conclusions to the Charles Law Lab that we've already started. This is what your data table should look like. You should have temperatures and drops laid out inside the data table. All right, so now let's talk about how to do a graph because we're only going to have like uh, one calculation from this lab, and that's going to be a percent error. I want to get a sheet of graph paper out. And first thing I'm going to do is lay out the graph paper. So I'm going to take a ruler. And this is a 10 division per inch graph paper. I'm going to find the first bold line from the bottom across my graph paper. And I'm going to take, back in college, I used to love using like a felt tip pen or something to do this. But I'm going to use a blue pen, and I'm going to try and make it really nice and bold across the bottom of my graph paper. Because I want this line to really stand out across my paper and it doesn't really great on the video but in real life it kind of does then we'll do the same thing on this edge I'm gonna come the first line over and I'm gonna do that same thing I said in college I used to keep a little sharpie pen just for this purpose Ooh, I could have used red but oh well I'll use red for the other parts alright so basically what I've done is I've made my axes right now so I've made my axes to the paper one bold line up, one bold line over. And now I'm going to label the graph the way I want it. In the center of the bottom, down here at the center of the bottom, I'm going to actually write, uh, I'm going to write a big T for temperature. And temperature is going to be in degrees Celsius on the bottom. And then over on middle ways on the side I'm gonna put a V for volume and volume is kind of a weird unit we're using drops we're gonna use drops for the volume over on the side at the very course top corner I'm going to put my name and my date in the top right hand corner of the graph paper uh, at the center of the paper at the very top you should always write a title anytime you do a graph in science. So I'm going to call this Charles Law. Charles Law. And should be apostrophe. There you go. At the top. And usually somebody always ends up asking, ooh, I didn't do a very good job centering this, but oh well. Uh, somebody always asks, can you write in the graph itself? Yeah, yeah. You can use a sheet. I mean, a lot of graph paper has graph paper all over it. This one just happens to have a border. But now I'm going to write the in drops so I'll wrote this V in drops under my title versus VS and I've got that versus temperature in degrees Celsius and so this is how you label the graph so the graph is done the axes have been labeled I've got a title on the left side or I've labeled that axis I've labeled the bottom axis I've got my name and date in the top right hand corner. I've got a title for my lab and then I've told what this is a graph of. And the reason why you do that is sometimes you do a lab report, you'll have more than one graph in there. Now's gonna be the neat part where we get to label the axes on this. And I wish I had a, like something marker wise that showed up even better than what I've got because this is important. This, this is gonna be weird. We're actually gonna start this is not going to be zero across the bottom. This first line is actually going to be, and I'm going to just grab a Sharpie so that you can see it really big. This first line across the bottom is actually negative 300 across the bottom. That The first bold line is negative 300, and we're going to back up 25 as we go. So the next line would be negative 275, negative 250, negative 225, uh, let's see, let's keep it going. This would be negative 200, negative 175, negative 150, negative 125. So every bold line is going back. So basically each little line is going to be 5 in a positive direction. Uh, let's see, we're now at negative 100, negative 75, negative 50, negative 25, negative, oh wait, I'm at negative 20, that means I'm finally to zero. So we're actually going to get to zero over here, and then 25, we're going to get to 50, 
and then 75 and I'm just going to stop at 100 because I know that your number should not have went past 100 over here now so we're going to start at negative 300 and we're actually going to work our way to 0 all the way to positive 100 on this going up we're going to start with that first line this first line up here is going to be 20 and then we're going to go 40 uh, 60 80 100 120 140 160 180 200 which I'm going to stop at 200 going up because I know that we're not going to get past 200 going up alright now all I need to do next is I'll look at my data table and my numbers that my graph is labeled my first point is going to be 20 degrees and 131 so I'm going to find 20 degrees on my graph and it's 20.2 so I'm going to go over here to my graph and it looks like for me 20 20.2 20 degrees is going to be basically right here on my graph so I'm going to put a mark there and then 131 drops well let's see my lines going up are worth five each so I'm going to be 131 so I'm going to get over here to the side and there's a 120, 125, 130 which means 131 would be just right past that somewhere in there let's see if I did this right 125, 130, 135, 140 no I can't add right let's see what in the world these numbers are I think they're going up by uh, somebody help me real quick what is 20 divided by 5 that's 4 so this would be 124 128 so that would be 132 so 131 would be right below, before it so now I want to find where these lines meet I'm going to actually use a ruler and lay on top so I'll put my ruler down here and then I'm going to find where that line meets and I'm going to put a dot small dot right there and now I'm going to do my next one my next one I'm going to go over to 30 degrees which there's 25 so 30 would be that next line so I'm going to go to 30 I'm going to lay this ruler down and I need to go up to 140 140 is my next point over here so I'm going to go to 140 oh I've got a that's a, going to be a bold line so it's going to be right there and then I'm going to 30 let's see where am I 40 would be next so there's 30 35 40.2 so I'm gonna go there and now I'm gonna go up to 146 144 146 then would be right there and then I'm gonna go to where am I now 50 and at 50 I've got 152 so 44 48 52 there would be my 52 dot and then 60 and at 60 I've got 161 which would be right here and then my last one is right here so I end up with four dots laid out just like this all I'm going to do is take the ruler and I'm going to lay it on those dots and my graph is not going to be great but I'm going to lay my ruler down just like this and I'm going to draw a line all the way across my graph paper through those dots I may not even touch any of those dots but I'm going to lay my ruler down draw it all the way through them and I pretty well centered up I missed one dot but I drew it all the way through and now I'm going to go back down here this is the this is all the purpose of the lab I want to find where the graph crosses down here on this axis negative 175 negative 180 so my graph crosses at negative 180 degrees Celsius so this is going to be my conclusion my conclusion for the lab now is going to be Conclusion, I found absolute zero to be negative 180 degrees Celsius with 
a percent error of ooh well that's a good point if I'm going to do a percent error I better calculate that so I should probably get another sheet of paper and do a calculation percent error is equal to e minus a over a times 100 now all I'm going to do is leave off the negative because you may not have done a great lab but it would at least be negative so my experimental is 180 minus it should have been 273 over 273 times 100 and let's just see how bad my results were on this lab so I've got 180 minus 273 divided by 273 34.0 so I've got a 34 percent error in my lab I'm gonna blame that on somebody else I'm gonna blame Hunter Peterson for it actually percent error of 34 percent and then of course I'll do my source of error next in my and source of error I'm gonna be honest hey y'all the real device we need to do this lab costs like hundred twenty one dollars device Instead, I developed a way for y'all to use a five cent fin stem pipette to try and do this lab and pitched off the end. And I mean, this was a really hard, I can give you two things. One, trying to do this using the little pipette. And two, we're not even using up all our graph paper. In college, normally this would get you burned alive using a graph paper and you only putting dots in this one little section but it was the only way if we did this in a computer our results would be much better but it was the only way we could get the fit on the graph paper and still find the place for the line to cross so you could either talk about not getting to capitalize the graph paper using the little thin stem pipette you got a couple of different things but when you're done I mean this is what you're graph paper should look like though overall it should look like this and now what you're going to do with your lab book my borrow somebody's lab book real quick what you're going to do this is how what you're going to do with your graph you're going to take your take your lab book and I want you to go ahead and just strike this whole page initial it date it and then I want you to take this graph that you just did lay it in the lab book and then just staple it in two spots staple it fold it over like that and you'll have it sealed in your lab book alright does anybody have any questions of course not this is a video but anyway sorry I can't help it alright good luck everybody